don't need a bigger knife. Yeah. Greetings, everybody. We're back around the table today to continue the discussion of how to properly gold class a crooked river. Know the room, jeez. I do. We all like this a lot more than the, the full size uh, gold class we came out with. It was like a backhanded compliment. Is that what <laughs> yeah, they call it? Well, yeah, yeah. You're, 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 you're nagging him a little. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, one of the main points that we all like this way more than the uh, full size gold class that they came out with. Damasteel. Yep. Yeah. yeah. On the parts that matter. Yep. For the blade, not the bolster. Don't get us wrong. <laughs> Bolsters, backspacers, anything you want, and damasteel it up, that's cool. But the most important thing is the blade, for sure. One ECB is better for edge retention. Yes, this we know. But I don't care about edge retention on a cold class. Ask custom no. knife makers when it comes to work of art about edge oh, retention. Oh, Jesus, yep. yeah. We got RWL. It's going to throw it in the mix. Yeah. Every, and and that's what place. Damasteel is at the end of the day. So, yeah. Yeah. cool. I'm, yeah. I'm down with it's that. It's a functional steel. I mean, if you oh, are definitely. the type of person to pocket this thing and actually use it, sure, why not? Mm -hmm. But, I mean, like, I have one actual complaint about this knife, and it's not even really a complaint. Yeah. But that's how well they did this knife overall. <laughs> well, and everything from the brass to go along with the classiness of mm -hmm. I said in the Tuesday episode what it should have been in the first place. Got is brass process. on the original one and not orange. And yeah. I understand the Hunt series thing, but that knife screamed to have brass. Let's yep. show off that spine a little bit. Just the, uh, yeah, the damn steel. Mm. It's it's pretty. Mm. Yeah, not sure if the camera will pick up the details, but you can definitely see the layer layering of the layers on the spine. The layered layers. Yes. Yep. Of the layering on and the, the spine. The lack of gappiness between the the carbon fiber and the fear yeah, section the, like, seam, it is the seams tight. are pretty nice yeah. for for what ultimately is a high-end production knife to see it this clean and this crisp is very nice grinds are pretty good centering is pretty good so for all the bench made haters it's it's a beautiful thing mm -hmm. yeah well it's definitely oh it's just, don't yeah, get me yeah, wrong no. i got offset we all have off-centered bench made in our collection but yeah, true story this one won't be whoever puts it in their collection and it won't be us because we're <laughs> not rich yeah I was going to say, the one mm -hmm. thing that really stands out to me is just the way it flows. Like, it, mm -hmm. the, the swirl patterns and stuff like that just flow right through the knife. The brass accents kind of plan off, off each other. I'm very curious to see other models and see the contrast of the lunar pattern compared to the marbled carbon fiber, because mm -hmm. this one does seem to complement mm -hmm. each other very yes. nicely. But, but I'm, from model to model, I'm yeah. curious on how the individual patterns will There's got to be one ugly one out there, right? And just be like, oh, yeah. that's just weird patterns chopping together right so there was a specific name for this pattern right it's right here on this fancy card excellent, <laughs> yeah, excellent. it's a vinland vinland pattern damasteel steel blade right. so the blade at least you should expect to have some sort of consistency to this mm -hmm. and the refere noble is uh refere noble yellow moon brass mesh resin composite in length yellow moon very cool yellow moon so, and very cratery mm -hmm. in its look yeah. to it. Yeah. Yeah. Purple balloons. I, <laughs> they're always after them. Um, <laughs> also, you can turn into us. Not completely see-through because of the steel liners, but there is some skeletonizing on it. So if you do get it up in the sunlight or do mm -hmm. put a flashlight through mm -hmm. it, do you have it, your little pin? it I does. I certainly do. Yeah. Get okay. some cool glow to it. We're going to blind everyone. <laughs> Just Paul. Just me. Yeah. <laughs> Here, you can do this a little bit. Yep. So, oh, and I don't know, easy on them. I don't know how well this is going to turn up in, on the camera, but they left the milling pattern on the refere uh, section. He's just mm -hmm. jumping right into it. I'm doing yeah. it. He's I'm just doing jumping it. right in. I know I'm going to forget if I don't bring it up right now. So. <laughs> well, you can pop up a picture. And... Ah, perfect. Yeah, there we yeah. go. Yeah. So there's a nice close-up. Um, it's not the... It, it's not really a true complaint because it does add some texture and I do like that. Mm -hmm. But for the money I'm paying, I'd like to see some polishing going on. Yeah. So what happened is they contoured the scales a little bit. And to do that, they CNC machined them. And you can, in the right light or whatnot, actually see the tool patterns. And it's 100%. Not, it's mm. something that you could probably remove within 15 minutes with some polishing compound and even if you had to do it by hand. Yeah. Just knowing the amount of hand fitting that goes into this already, 
I would have liked to have seen it. The, yeah. the more light that passes through the the resin tube, the better it's going to look. The more polished that is, the more light that's going to pass through it, mm-hmm. the prettier it's going to be. Yeah, it's true, but you're all finding a complaint on the fact that they 3D rounded carbon fiber. And <laughs> like you're I like, said, they didn't is... do it good enough. No, no, like, like I said, I have one, one complaint. Yeah, yeah. And it's not really a complaint. Yeah. That was it. It's you're not just... carrying your Sabenza today, but if the, you look at the Chris Reeve carbon fiber Sabenza, it's just like a slab mm-hmm. that you're paying an extra three yeah. to 400 bucks oh, yeah. for. Our complaint is about rounding, so pretty yes, much. I think, 100%. I, and again, I scored it higher than the rest of you boys, so <laughs> yeah. it might be a little bit like you realize what we're complaining about right now. Oh, right? yeah, but, but, but that's the, the name of the game is we're trying much. to find things yeah. to complain. Yeah, have you met uh, us? Oh, sure. <laughs> One other thing. The Edge did not have the same level of polish that the uh, the large size Crooked River for a class for, for the price of the large size, it better have it a better have a mirror polish, polish that you could. Yeah, get. it but, wasn't offering much else other than no. that shiny polish. So one thing that would be neat to see and compare to other gold classes with a Dama steel blade is how polished those mm-hmm. are and do a correct deck. And I don't think they were. If yeah. I look, think back, and I think about a valet, I think about a bug out. I don't think they were highly mm-hmm. mirror polished. Fair enough. Which is maybe the difference of why they did with the twenty CV. Right. If it's the equivalent of like. Um, 154CM or RWL34, it, theoretically, you could put a pretty nice polish on that if you mm-hmm. wanted to yourself. Yeah, too, right? like, you should be able to. You could, yes, <laughs> definitely. Um, one of the things with the Dama Steel, though, and the multiple layers is kind of almost like that dual core thing that Shun came out with, That's where right. you've got multiple actions working as teeth. Maybe adding another layer of a toothier grind on top of that is mm-hmm. just going to give you some crazy cutting ability. I don't know, just theorizing, but multiple steels, toothy edge, extra saw toothy action. Who knows? I, either the way. Saw toothy action. <laughs> Either way, definitely more of a nitpick than anything else. Because I'm struggling to find something that I dislike about this knife. It's hard to dislike. Um, and we did dabble on, or at least I did briefly in the Tuesday episode, about the price points of other gold class. Not just the um, larger Crooked River that mm-hmm. came out at a pretty astronomical price point. Yeah. but um, Double the cost. <laughs> even things in the past of carbon fiber Osbournes and things like yeah, that, yeah. or the international exclusive blue and gold Osborne that you yeah. just saw go for crazy hot price. Yes. And they just yeah. anodized the candle a different color and <laughs> told the USA they couldn't have it and everyone <laughs> lost their crap over it, right? So yeah. Yeah. a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're looking at what you're getting, again, this is easily in the realm of competitive gold class price oh, yeah. points and i'm not talking yeah. competitive price point for an overall knife because you're paying bench pay tax yeah for mm-hmm. sure you are right but we've all paid it <laughs> yeah kind of so. we're kind of suckers like that aren't we <laughs> <laughs> there it is i just realized <laughs> yeah so again like if you're already on that train and you're not oh. like cut them off for whatever politics or side action mm-hmm. or the fact that Omega Springs break, you hater. <laughs> Send an email, <laughs> you, know, you lazy. That, anyway. That's not a Benchmade issue. That's just you being yes. too caustic. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's just acidic. Although I will say with um, things like the fact Omega Springs where they're triple yes. curling them, mm-hmm. if they can incorporate that factor into more Omega Springs, I think you would solve a longevity problem. That would be nice. Yeah. I know. It should be an every night going forward. But it's not about yeah. this knife in particular. It's just about Benchmade. And right. Yeah. Yeah. And this is, like, as far as their attempt at reaching a custom level for knife production, the, they're doing good work. Mm-hmm. And that again, I don't know that you could find a custom maker that could give you all of this for that price. Uh, yeah, no. And, like, even thinking about either semi-production, like William Henry. Yeah. And uh, for a knife yeah. like that, you're looking at two or $3,000 probably price point. Oh, easy. With mm-hmm. similar materials. Now, the difference is, is you're probably going to be a one of 25 or a one of 50. You, yeah. Much more severely it's, limited, for sure. But I bet you you might see more gaps in a William Henry. <laughs> 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 Nothing to hate and against, because he know. can yeah. be seamless. I was going to say, you, you'd probably see more, like, rubies and stuff on it. Yeah. Yeah. Hand engraving, that kind of thing. Yeah. So one really cool thing about the Benchmade stuff and with the gold classes is they do give you a nice little birth certificate. And uh, with this one being one of the uh, unlimited limited ones that they're doing for the gold class series, it's a uh, production for 2020 and they're just going to make as many as they can. 
make as many as they can. Yeah. January uh, 15th. I didn't see a close up of that little. Yeah. Okay. 347 so in 15 days. We can dabble on that. Good. We're in the end of February right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've already pumped out that many. Now, given there's going to be breaks in production, but well, that's impressive. Have they break for the last two months? Because that's almost what we're looking at for the time of. So chances are we're already up into a $1,000 or an 800 750 something like that. Jeez. Because yeah. I bet you four to 500 are pumped out at the beginning of January. They made the right choice. That's all I'm saying. They oh, anticipated yes. making yeah. the right choice, seeing that number compared to other limited unlimiteds that have been number 82 or number 182, <laughs> yeah. the 347 at the beginning of January or mid-January um, is kind of crazy mm -hmm. on that note. That almost makes it, if you could afford it, it almost might be worth just carrying it. Because it's not going to be worth as much as some well, of the low number ones. And that's what the, the limited unlimited kind of was, is it was supposed to be a more carryable option. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because they found when there was only 200 or only 500 that no one wanted to carry them because they became these pouch wall safe grail knives that everyone just showed off right i wouldn't want to carry that and that's probably why they chintzed out on the boss hey, let's yeah. there. we there. okay, there's, another, there's another slag boys yeah. and girls All right. holy jesus so, you know those nice display boxes you would typically get with your gold class benchmates well you're not getting it here yep go to hell <laughs> you get a cardboard box you know that that box is worth at least six hundred dollars yeah. and that's what <laughs> well, you do get really nice gold lettering on your sunglass pouch for yeah. it yeah <laughs> you don't just get the white lettering this time around or the off gray lettering and yep. <laughs> they did actually do one step further where they did the felt cutout just in case you want to display in your like cardboard they box kind of cared yeah. <laughs> Closed, uh, mind you. I, I would say without that fancy really display. No, without that fancy box, I would have liked to have seen the price be a little bit lower, to be honest. But yeah, yeah. Well, and maybe maybe, is. maybe that's why we're praising. And honestly, at a thousand sixty nine, it's a rough pill to swallow that we're praising that. But at the same time, half of our conversation tonight has been about how gold class has not been unreasonable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So honestly. If you're telling me you can pump out this kind of quality of gold class and this is the compromise, I'm willing to make oh, absolutely. as much as we all hate on this. And we all love the fancy little box that we can put on display. Yeah. But that's just it. And the myth, uh, not the myth, though, sorry. The, uh, the intention here is for people to carry it. So not having a fancy display box does play into that. Yep. Absolutely. No, I love that. And I hate that, too. The limited unlimiteds. I thought the limiteds were cool as far as a collector mm -hmm. goes. Absolutely. Because if you got your chance to get one, you're just like, yeah, this many. And whether it's 300 Pardue in internationals or whether yep. it's the new 940 that they made 2000. Yeah. There was something special. And I would love to see Benchmade at the very least go back into a history log and say exactly how many they made for yes. the previous years, yeah. just so the public knows, right? Mm -hmm. I think that no, would be so worth. awesome. No, and not just that, but at least a finalized number yep. to say what number did I get out of yep. Yep. blah, blah, blah. That would be nice. It would change the collectability. I think it would be cool for the market. And all of a sudden, knives that – maybe weren't so popular to begin with would become more popular because they weren't as many made yeah. Yeah. of a mm -hmm. knife. And, and like, I it just, definitely yeah, see that you can yeah, see yeah. it kind of cool. Yeah. So I think it's something Benchmade should consider and they'll probably never hear this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, like, One day, yep. a hundred years from now. Sometimes <laughs> I'm a smart man and have smart ideas. So. Sometimes. Don't worry about it. Sometimes I have stupid <laughs> ideas. <laughs> I'm hospitalized, but that's yeah. it. <laughs> that's the subject of a different video. Yep. So going to give a big giant thank out once again to the cutting edge for lending us this wonderful, wonderful knife for our review. Thanks for trusting us. Holy yep. cow, so guys. Yeah. yeah. It's so awesome. I can't wait to cut my steak tonight with it. <laughs> <laughs> this, it won't patina. It's damn steel. Yeah, You'll exactly. never know. Yep. Right, right next to the bone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paper plates, right? Yeah. <laughs> And then if you are like Dennis and are tired of hearing the thank out, um, head on over to the Patreon and see <laughs> if you're willing to stop that or if you're wanting to... Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're wanting to help us out by donating to one of the other tiers, which is up and available with stickers. Do that. Stickers! Yep. We got some cool stickers. We're pretty happy with them. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have more to come for swag, for sure. Oh, we're yeah. cool about the Pokey Factor logo, and I think it'll be fun to see where this evolves and goes to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Sticker bomb the planet. 
<laughs> uh, on the opposite note, Instagram. Yeah, um, head on over to the Instagrams. Um, yeah, you heard me. I said it again. You gotta stop. No, we're not making a tear for that too. <laughs> That's fair. Um, head on over to Instagram. Give us a follow. Uh, get some behind the scenes stuff. See what knife we're reviewing that week. Play a little game potentially. Um, so you're gonna find out there when we're doing giveaways and stuff like that as well. Uh, we'll get Gramps over here to figure out uh, Instagram Live and have a lot of those live feeds going on on Sunday nights for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. Hopefully, a lot more to come. So yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're got nothing better to do or want to hang out with some buddies, uh, fire up the Instagram and hang out with us as well. Fire up the Instagram. <laughs> Holy the cow! Instagram. <laughs> These guys and their steam <laughs> engines are going Trickle places. Like, get off my lawn! <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> and that being that. This is Grandpa Nigel the Smith signing off. Uh, I am who I am. I'm Dennis Pipers. I am Darren Joe. I'm Exile.ca. Who's also Grandpa. We'll see you next time. (laughs) First of all, it's my lawn (laughs) out there. There's an axe not far from it to make you get off of it. We don't need. Yeah.